Hi, everyone. Welcome to the M365 Pulse. I am actually here today, which is nice, joining <laughs> with my good friends Tamara and Tom as we go through and talk about all the fun updates to the roadmap. Uh, Jen is not with us this week. Hopefully, she'll be back next week. But we have some pretty cool updates coming through. As always, we'll be going over the changes to the M365 roadmap, starting with um, a development, going from there to rolling out and finally to launch and maybe even some canceled. So uh, it's always a fun time. And we'll kind of get going and talk about what we like the most, what we see change. And with that said, we'll go ahead and let Tom start off first, because mm -hmm. I feel like Tamara's the pretty one and she always gets to start. So we'll, we'll mix it up this week. Don't toss, toss me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and skip a little bit further down on the list and take three of the Microsoft Stream ones. Um, nice. Looks like Stream was getting some particular love this week. <clears throat> First one is playlist support for Stream Web Part in SharePoint. So they have a new Stream Web Part. They've had that for a while there. And you used to be able to put actual, you know, Here's a stream video, and it would then display in this new stream web part. Well, it never handled playlists. So now they're adding playlist support. Mm -hmm. So now you can embed a playlist using the stream web part into grid and theater layout so that you can go ahead and share this stuff with other people. And this would be great for training scenarios where you've got like, you know, four or five different videos you want somebody to listen to, and you want to put the playlist on there on a page and say, hey, use these five and you don't have to actually put all five videos on there. You just put the playlist at points to where they're at. That's coming out in April and is coming out to everybody. Then we get to Microsoft stream delete option in streams web app. This one scares me. <laughs> stream <laughs> is adding a delete option in the stream web app. If a user has editing permissions to a video in stream, they will be able to delete a video directly from the stream web app by oh, clicking on like the delete this. button. Yeah, no, I'm not <laughs> sure. But you do get to confirm the action first. Woohoo! <laughs> the video file will be sent to the recycle bin of the OneDrive or SharePoint page the video was hosted on, and any access to the video will lead to a page informing it's been removed. Bad idea, oh. Microsoft. Bad idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, okay, I get it but yeah that's i mean every me. it will go to the deleted items or the recycling bin i'm sure it will be recoverable and then in 98 days somebody will figure out it's missing and it's gone <laughs> not a problem so that's just coming to worldwide that's not coming to the government tenants and then the last one that i will touch on is microsoft stream first run experience so this is first time users of microsoft stream will see informational modals that explain what stream is and its basic functionality. Users will be able to close these modals, I love that word, at any step. When the tenant acquires new premium functionality, such as Copilot in stream, more modals, modal, 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 will be displayed explaining the new functionalities. I think this is really good, especially for people who are used to stream classic, because a lot of them have trouble wrapping their head around the fact that Stream Classic was go dump your videos in stream and everything will live in stream and you can find everything in stream. Well, now stream is like, yeah, here's a portal to all the things that have been shared to you or that you may have been created all over the place, the whole bit. And it's not a single location anymore. So I think having these things pop up and tell people what's going on, giving them a little bit of a heads up is probably a really, really good idea. Uh, due out next month, and it's going to worldwide again. Government tenants don't seem to be getting that particular love. So they'll get it that, eventually. Give it time. Yeah, they will. Yeah, because that's all critical stuff. And I don't think stream, new stream SharePoint and OneDrive, I don't think that's rolling out at the same pace as worldwide for the government tenants. So they'll probably be, you know, shortly thereafter, they'll be getting all the stuff that we're now seeing as part of the bringing stream on SharePoint and OneDrive up to what used to be the parody of Stream Classic. So good stuff. Tamara, what you got? Awesome. Microsoft Teams, save meeting content with collaborative annotation as a whiteboard. So collaborative annotations available now enable meeting participants with the presenter role to enable annotations after sharing their screen. This allows everyone in the meeting to draw, add a note, react, highlight text, and more to share their thoughts right on the content live with everyone else. 
Now, participants sharing their screen will have the ability to save content with all of those annotations as a whiteboard, enabling all meeting participants to revisit the content and continue collaborating after the meeting. And everybody's getting that love, and it's due out in May 2024. I love this change. <laughs> I really yeah. love this change. Yeah, collaborative editing or annotations on screen sharing. Great idea, but it's like, okay, so you stop sharing, annotations go away. Oh, let's save them. Hmm, guess what? You better take a screen print and do it because there's no built-in functionality to do that. And now this, there I is. This, I think, is awesome. So looking forward to this. And one. then there's two for SharePoint. SharePoint Premium Content Query. Columns in new libraries are queryable. So with this update, columns in a newly created library are licensed by licensed users are all made available to content query. Also, users can trigger an action to make all columns in the existing libraries available to content query. And that's coming out April 2024. And that's coming out worldwide. The other one that I really like is SharePoint pages, new section level content align. Because your pages look kind of hodgepodgey, no matter how much inkling you do with everything that's on the page. So with site level content align, authors will now be able to center and bottom align all the web parts within a single section. This will make it easier for all of the columns in your section to be visually harmonious. Um. <laughs> and reduce the need for the spacer web part. Just too bad because I just figured out what the spacer web part was and I was so thrilled with it. Now I may not need Dude, it. Dude, it's much to anymore. add space. <laughs> the name says it. Come on. I know, but I just I never saw that it existed. I was You're I was, better than that, Duff. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have, Adam? Uh, there's two that I like um, that I thought was kind of cool. Um, both of them are more feature updates that are coming out than necessarily admin updates like I normally like, but I thought both of them were cool. So we've talked a little bit about Microsoft ClipChamp. It's basically uh, video editing software that Microsoft added late last year in Office 365. Think about it as like a competitor to like Camtasia or something like that. Um, cool technology, again, added value and going through. Um, I thought this was a unique crossover between that platform and AI. Um, you'll be able to remove background from your image and photos using AI. So if you're recording a video and you record the video and have just your normal webcam on the background, you'll be able to go in and remove that background using AI that in theory would follow you as you move around, even if you didn't have that inserted at the time of the recording, which was just kind of cool and kind of neat. So I thought that one was, was fun. And then the other one that I thought was interesting, and again, this is also a new thing with Copilot, um, it's the idea that um, you can go through and let me see if I can find it specifically. It was um, basically when you're going through and looking at files through your, your files in Office 365, um, Copilot will now uh, in OneDrive be able to essentially analyze those files. So as you're going through and looking at a doc and stuff like that, or looking at a screenshot or whatever it is, um, it will actually use Copilot where it can give you a summary of the information that's looking at on the screen, which I thought was cool. And then final one for me, just because I thought this was neat as well and something I will actually use. So very recently, Planet started rolling out Teams Premium and to some of the features for our PMs and some of our managers. And one of the really cool things you can do in Teams Premium is go through and do like meeting recaps and summaries of stuff that went through, which was nice and cool to get. And there's some limitations around there, but there's a new update and in development for OneNote where Teams integration with OneNote will now include meeting details. So you can basically go in and start pulling in information about the meeting details from your Teams, including the intelligent meeting recap, which is the AI generated content that you get, I assume with Teams Premium, can actually start being automatically included. So this is one of the features that I absolutely love about OneNote and use all the time. And you know, if I ever go through and do like sessions at conferences, even sessions that have nothing to do with it, I like to show people like, hey, I don't know if you know this, but you can go into OneNote, there's this integration with Outlook and you can pull in meeting details and it's wonderful and great for information. Well, now that's gonna be taken a step further because not only can you include like 
details about the meeting, who was included, stuff like that, you can also start automatically including AI generated notes if you have access to those features. So this takes what might be one of my favorite features in Office 365 and turbocharges it with AI with Copilot. So super happy and excited to see that like 100%, I will use the crap out of this feature. So we're just really <laughs> excited to see it. Cool. That's uh, fabulous. Anything else in, in development for you guys? No, I'm all good. I'm ready to go on. All right, cool. Well, let's, let's keep the ball rolling. Next, we have rolling out. Tamara, why don't you go first since we let Tom go first last time? Sure. Microsoft Teams' ability to duplicate an existing webinar for simplified <laughs> event creation. I create like 60 of these a month. And it's just, I mean, I've got it down to a pattern now. But how much stuff you have to put into the webinar to make it <laughs> useful? And I just got Teams Premium, so I'm very excited because it's going to allow me to control the emails that go out. So what this means is organizers can schedule a new webinar by duplicating information from an existing scheduled one. This includes duplicating information such as details, presenters, theming, and more. The organizer can also edit and update the information as needed for the new event. I am so excited about this. <laughs> it's going to make my life so happy. Yay. And what do you have, Tom? Happy, I'm happy. Yes, you are. <laughs> so one that I absolutely love because it's like Microsoft has done a really good job with this so far, and now they seem to be taking it to yet another level. That is Microsoft Teams voice isolation. Mm -hmm. So this is using this voice isolation feature. You can enjoy clean and uninterrupted calls or meetings no matter where you're at. This feature uses AI, you see a theme here, to filter out all background noises, including other people's voices. So by leveraging your voice profile, and you do have to train this beforehand, this advanced noise suppression capability ensures not only the user's voice is transmitted, or that only the user's voice is transmitted. Whether you're in a busy office, noise cafe, or crowded airport, you can communicate with confidence and clarity. I love the fact it gets down here. Voice isolation is powered by our advanced deep learning speech services and audio processing technology, and it shows our dedication to solving user problems with AI and enhancing audio quality and experience. Okay. <laughs> that was really good writing, and I still like it, and I agree with it. Uh, yeah, the fact that you can be on a meeting with somebody and you're hearing them, you know, voice like we're doing right now, and you have no idea that they're in the middle of a busy cafe or a busy airport and you've got all the background noises. This, I think, is awesome. I am so looking forward to this. And it doesn't say, excuse me, it doesn't say it's a premium feature. So I'm assuming this is rolling out in new teams. And yeah, I will be profiling the heck out of my voice for this one, <laughs> even though I don't have any background noise, but hey. <laughs> you might start having background noise. Yeah, too. she'll come in. As, you'll start coming in and making noise just to see how well does this look? Is it working? <laughs> yeah, is it working? Can anybody hear that? Nope. Okay, it's working fine. Go back in your office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have two I'll, I'll do real quick. So um, one is just purely, uh, I have a use case for one of my clients right now, so seeing this was cool. Uh, he heavily uses Outlook to do um, for his task, and he uses a Mac. And Outlook to do is coming, or to do is coming to Outlook for the Mac. Uh, it's rolling out right now. So excited to see that. If you're someone who likes to use to do to manage your task and you use a Mac, it'd be nice to have that somewhere other than the online web interface. And then the other one that I thought was actually kind of cool and that I wanted to mention was, um, going through and looking at the different options that they have, you actually have the ability to, let me make sure I read this correctly. Um, you can basically provide intent and in Microsoft Defender for 365. So if you use Microsoft Defender for 365, this is a series of admin activities. We can get stuff like, oh, you've gotten a message that has malware in it or spam in it or or phishing or something like that. And it's a whole interface that you can go through and you can classify these. Well, they've had the option there that you can submit the message to Microsoft if you need to, but that's what the option is. And there could be a whole number of reasons you want to submit to Microsoft. It could be because you're just wanting to say, hey, I don't know if there's malware in here or not. 
So I'm going to submit it for a review for Microsoft. It could be because you say, oh, yeah, no, there's definitely malware and I need to let someone know about it. Or it could even be that you think it's a false positive. It's being identified as malware, but it's, uh, it's a legitimate user reason. Up until now, you just had to submit it and hope that they got your inference. You'll now basically get additional options when you go through to submit the defender notification to basically say why you're submitting it to Microsoft. I want a second opinion, confirming it's malware, I think it's a false positive, whatever, um, which in theory should just make the support experience better. So better to see that too. Great. I did have one more in rolling out. Go for it. SharePoint Microsoft lists a new forms experience to collect information. This makes me nervous because I customize <laughs> a lot of my forms with JSON. <clears throat> And I wonder what this is going to do to it. If yeah. it's going to wreck the JSON that I used, or if it's going to leave the JSON in place, what's going to happen? Anyway, yeah. Microsoft is making it easier to collect information with updated forms experience for Microsoft lists. So forms look clean, are easy to design, and can easily be shared. And respondents are able to fill them out on any device. Now, all form responses appear immediately in your list after the recipient clicks on the submit button, which is how it works now, people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, but this is rolling out in March of 2024, and it's rolling out to everybody. I've read a little bit about this in other venues, and it sounds interesting in the standpoint that this <clears throat> kind of divorces the form process from the list process and the fact that you can create a new form for them to enter information into the list, but you really don't have to tell them anything about the list. They just deal with the form and that's it, which you can kind of do with URLs right now, but that's interesting. <clears throat> and I think there was also something that said you can set it up to where, you know, you get to generate this part of the form and this part of the data, and then somebody else can come in and using that same, mm. you know, list item can use a different form to generate others. I'll have to see that to see how that works, but it's almost like they're bringing the Microsoft <laughs> forms experience into Microsoft lists, which I think is really good. Cause a lot of people are like, I hate the default SharePoint list forms. They're ugly. Yeah, they are but they work. <laughs> this kind of gives you a little bit more colorfulness um, and makes a little bit better splash on the form. And if people can do it and make it look good and you don't have to talk to us to get it done for you, that's great. <clears throat> I do have one that I'm going to mention, not necessarily yeah. for the content, but for what I'm seeing them do, which is interesting. Outlook, draft by Copilot in classic Outlook for Windows. So Copilot combines the power of large language models and Outlook data to help you do more. Copilot can now help you draft new messages or replies. Yeah, this is something that for Outlook on the web and the new Outlook, um, yeah, this is expected and that's where it's going. It really surprises me though, that they are still doing something this significant to classic Outlook, because I've got a feeling mm -hmm. that one's on its final legs. Um, and a lot of the changes they've made to new Outlook and Outlook on the web will never make it to classic Outlook. I'm yeah, really I think it's more about getting buy-in getting... and people getting behind exactly. Copilot as a whole. So <clears throat> yeah. um, I don't know how many of you guys have your, you know, your own computers you don't use for work, but my home computer, which just has Windows 11 on it, but just has a commercial version of Windows 11, right? I, I don't have it through through an enterprise thing. Um, there is now currently a new icon that shows up at the bottom for basically Windows Copilot to do uh, 365 style stuff with machine learning. That's basically a free trial that you can go through and use now with, <laughs> so like essentially I just have generic commercial Windows 11 and like notice after an update that I did like a day or two ago, oh, there's a new icon at the bottom of my Windows. And it's essentially Copilot for Windows and a free trial to try to get you to go through and use it. So if you start using it, it then has some sort of subscription model behind it. But rather clearly they are trying to get normal users in their user base to embrace and get more comfortable with the idea of Copilot. Because understandably, I'm sure Microsoft sees that as a huge revenue oh, yeah. maker for them in the future. Oh, yeah. And so I think similar with them rolling it out to just commercial Windows users as a whole, I think like, 
there's probably still a non insignificant amount of people that use the old version of Outlook just because that's what they know how to do and either haven't upgraded their Windows machine or something like that. I think that's just another attack surface for them to basically go through and get exposure to 365 to the potential commercial base, basically. Definitely agree. I think it's like walking down the streets of New York and some guy goes, hey, try before you buy. <laughs> I always call it free like you a just puppy. just get addicted. <laughs> yep. Here, right, here's cool. a free puppy. <laughs> Take it uh, home. <laughs> launched is not very big this time. I'll actually start because no. I haven't got to start yet, but I'll, I'll do one that I thought was kind of cool. Um, so essentially, Microsoft Defender for 365, user submission, automatic feedback response. So again, I just discussed what the Microsoft Defender for 365 is. This will now give your users the ability that they can report messages, especially they can report messages malware. They've already had that. It goes through into an interface that either you can take additional actions on it as an admin, or it will have Microsoft go through and review. Basically, if Microsoft goes through and reviews and determines, oh yeah, no, this was malware, they will now send an automated response to your users saying, oh, thanks for submitting that. This was malware. Oh, hey. You oh. that as malware, it was actually safe, it would have been fine type of a deal. But they will basically say what their investigation prompted back to the user as feedback. I think this is good for more than more than anything. Trying to train your users to do this is always a uphill battle, both to get them to go through and take the steps to do it and for them to feel like it's actually doing anything. So even if you, they submit it as malware and it's not malware, just getting a response from Microsoft saying, hey, we actually did take action on what you did and this is what we determined, I think will be positive reinforcement to go through and encourage users to continue to do it. So I think yeah. it's kind of cool. I'm glad to see the update. Cool. Uh, Tamara, you want to go next? Sure, Microsoft Teams Copilot for Microsoft 365 in Teams chat on mobile. So users will be able to easily access Copilot on Teams mobile app. And this is opening up for Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Copilot for 365, worldwide standard multi-tenant. I will be interested in Tom. I'm going to throw one out here just so I can say I said something for launched. <laughs> and that's Microsoft Viva and Viva Goals Copilot. Copilot everywhere. So with Copilot in Viva Goals, users will be able to leverage AI in creating goals, summaries, and making updates in Viva Goals. So I think that's great. If you're using Viva Goals, this is going to be able to allow you to get, you know, probably better goal creation that follows some sort of, you know, good practice about what makes a good goal and stuff like that and also do summaries for them so like that idea uh should be out came out in march and that hit the worldwide tenant also so no government but commercial is covered all right cool well uh there were three canceled this time i'll go ahead and, and just mention them now for people uh so there were two related to viva custom topic types for Viva Topics and editor's cohort for topics. Uh, both of these have basically just uh, been canceled and they have, if you'd like to know the changes related to topics as a whole and a link to the generic topics on the Office 365 roadmap. And then also Microsoft Teams workspace management. They basically said that they're not gonna be releasing this feature at the time. So if you were at all interested in either stuff related to Viva Topics um, or going through and looking at um, workspace management options in Teams, you can look into that and see why they're not going through and being released. Well, actually the, <clears throat> the two topic ones do not surprise me because Microsoft is discontinuing topics. So basically anything that had to do with topics, both of these say new topic features will not continue in 2024. Uh, please refer to the changes coming to topics. It was kind of funny though. Somebody had posted, I believe it might have been Facebook. <laughs> At the same time, they're going, topics is being discontinued. Another post came out from Microsoft. It's like, here's what the new version of topics will look like. And they're like, make up your mind. Is there a new version of yeah. topics or is topics completely being, you know? discontinued i think it seems it's like there's going to be a new version of it because it said please refer to the changes coming to topics and link it but yeah. like the planned features of the existing topics are no longer going to be a thing so there's exactly the impression i got is there will be a new topic that's almost like topics 2.0 and the changes that were coming to topic topics 1.0 are no longer a thing makes sense all right cool, cool. Well, this was a pulse. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, definitely a lot of changes coming through as a whole. Unsurprisingly, we've seen a metric ton of co-pilot stuff coming through in the last couple months. I'm Not sure surprised. that will continue. Yeah. So uh, thank you for joining us and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. All. Bye.